Hello and welcome this grand Christmas Eve. Happy to see you all here. I'd like to begin this evening with our greeting as found in your bulletins. In the beginning was the Word. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. And let us begin by lighting the candles. remember. A night when home broke in on us. A night when we were not forgotten or alone or abandoned. This night. This night is the night when here and there became one. When past and future combined in a breathless present. This is a night when we are home. In ourselves. In this family. In the God who loved us enough to walk beside us. We gather in the night to proclaim. Oh. We, we gather in the night to proclaim. Wait, how, how just, just a little bit louder. We gather. <laughs> we gather in the night to proclaim the light we shook of the off despair and embrace hope. We set aside conflict. And choose peace. We push away the spin by creating joy. We only calm hate by rising into life. Because this night we know even in the shadows of our doubts, we know that we are loved. That's what it means to be heard. We light these candles hoping to become the light, hoping to radiate light by how we live. We light these candles to create a space called home in this place, in our place, in inner places. We light these candles to declare that unto us a Savior is born who is Christ the Lord. Welcome home by angels singing and shepherds kneeling. Welcomed home by those like us who have worshipped for thousands of years. Welcomed home again tonight, right here, right now, in us. Welcome home. Now I'd love to begin with our opening hymn, number 246 in the hymnal, Joy to the World. If you will rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing. Thank you. 
if you'll pray with me. God, you welcome us into your light in this happy season when we celebrate the birth of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Be with us this night that we may be filled with his spirit, that we may joyfully join together at your table. Help us to unite in love as we sing your praises and remember all you have done for us and all that you will do. May you bless us with hope, peace, joy, and love in this Christmas celebration. Through Jesus, our Emmanuel, we know we are welcomed home. Amen. And I'll turn things over to the choir for our first special, O Beautiful Star. No bulletin is complete if it's mine without at least one omission. We now have Mary, did you know?
If you'll turn in your hymnals to page 815 and join with me in the reading of Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare the Lord's glory among the nations, the Lord's marvelous works among all the peoples. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name, bring an offering, and come to the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. I turn things over to the choir again. For when Christ was born.
We now read from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. If you'll now rise in body or in spirit and join me in singing number 230, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let us read again from the prophet Isaiah, this time from chapter 11, verses 1 through 4 and 6 through 9. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. 
The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. I turn things over again to our choir, this time for happy, happy birthday, gentle Savior. Now let us hear the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And here we are, once again on this Christmas Eve, celebrating the birth of our Savior. Sometimes it's hard to think about what to say on a night like this. You might think of trying to come up with something that people have never heard before. Telling the story in a way that makes it brand new and fresh, exciting. Trying something bold and different. I thought about all of those things. But I think there's a comfort in this story. The comfort that comes from it being a story that is well known. A story that is dear to our hearts. A story of love coming to us in the form of a child swaddled up and laying in the manger. There's something beautiful in its simplicity. Maybe it doesn't need something new and something flashy. Maybe it doesn't have to be reworked to give us brand new ideas. But maybe it's the old, old story that rekindles hope in our hearts. It's the well-known tale that lets us sit and listen in peace. It's those tidings of comfort and joy that give us cause to celebrate. Because it is, at its heart, a story of love. I think it's because it's familiar, because we may know it by heart, word for word, verse by verse, that it always speaks to us anew anyway. Because no matter how old the story may be, it never gets old. Because there's something in it that always brings a smile, that those who have walked in darkness discover light, that the Prince of Peace comes to walk among us, because it is a story of goodness. It's a story of the everyday. A mother gives birth to a child. But that child is our Emmanuel, God with us. And over the last few weeks, I have kept returning to that idea of God with us. Because for me, that's what Christmas is the recognition of God's great love, a love for you and me. The word become flesh to make his home with us. And that alone gives me joy. I like to think of those shepherds coming from their watch in the night after that miraculous message to come see this great and wondrous thing and they come and they find a baby. Not a strong and powerful warrior, not a commanding presence, not a royal celebration, but a newborn child held in his mother's arms. And it makes me wonder if they could feel it. The peace and the joy, the hope, the love, all of it right there in that little bundle. Did they treasure all of those things the way that Mary treasured their words? I hope so. 
I like to think they did because that's the feeling that swells up in me when I hear this story. The story of a Savior born in the city of David, that little town of Bethlehem. We sing the songs, we watch the movies, we bake the cookies, we make Christmas treats, we wrap gifts, we mail cards, we decorate the tree. <coughs> we do all of these things, things that bring us comfort, all of the things that remind us that it's Christmas. So take comfort in the old, old story. Listen to it and tell it in all of its simplicity and in all of its happiness. The story of how God loved humanity so much that he brought his son into the world to give us a message of love and hope, a message of good tidings, good news for the weak and the weary, good news for the poor and the hungry, good news for the downtrodden and the hopeless, good news for you and for me. No matter how stressed and how tired, the good news is there. The light will never be extinguished. The love is everlasting. The joy is always ours because God is with us, because God made his home among us, and in doing so, welcomed us to our true home. So on this night, I say to you, have a merry and blessed Christmas, and welcome home. Amen. If you would pray with me. God, we give thanks this night for your presence here with us. We retell the story of how you sent us your Son, our Savior, so that we may remember the great love that you have for us. Let your light flow in each of our lives this night and help us to celebrate with hearts grateful for your wonderful gift for your grace, your mercy, and your salvation. Forgive us when we go astray and guide us so that we may always walk in your light, Lord. We thank you for welcoming us into your loving home. Help us to remember all that Christ is for us as we pray the way that your blessed Son taught us to pray, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I turn things over now to our choir. For you are the light as we begin to pass the light in preparation for our final hymn.
join me now in our final hymn of the evening, if you'll rise in body or in spirit. For your convenience, the lyrics are printed on the back of the bulletin for Silent Light, Holy Night. May the love of Christ our Lord rest in your hearts this evening as we go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and Merry Christmas.
Merry Christmas.